Please be seated. Dear officer trainees and esteemed faculty members, our honorable chief guest, the honorable vice president of India, and the honorable chairman of Rajya Sabha, and the chief guest and the guest of honor, our honorable governor of Uttarakhand, have arrived. To begin today's formal program, I would like to request all to please rise for the national anthem and thereafter followed by the academy song. trainees, respected faculty members, and guests. Today, we are very fortunate to have in our midst two great excellencies, and the first is our esteemed chief guest, the Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar, sir. <laughs> Dr. Srimati Sudesh Dhankar, ma'am. Lieutenant General Retired Gurmeet Singh Ji, the Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand. In our midst, to preside over today's valedictory ceremony, 
To begin today's formal program, I would now like to request Sri Sri Ram Tarinikanti Sir, Director Lal Bahadur Shastri, the National Academy of Administration, to kindly present the formal welcome address, Sir. Namaskar, Honorable Vice President of India, Shri Jagdeep Dankarji, Madam Sudesh Dankarji, Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, Senior Officers of the Vice President Secretariat, my colleagues in the Academy, and IS Officer Trainees of 2023 Batch. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the Honorable Vice President of India, Shri Jagdeep Dankarji, Madam Sudesh Dankarji, and Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, and all the senior officers of the Officers of Vice President Secretariat, of the Office of the Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, my colleagues here, the IAS Officers Trainees of 2023 Batch. Shri Jagdeep Dankarji was born on 18th May 1951 in village Kithana, Junjuno District, Rajasthan. He is a distinguished figure in the realms of law, governance, and academia. Sri Dankarji brings with him a wealth of political experience and has served as a distinguished public representative throughout his career. His notable positions include member of the 9th Lok Sabha from the Junjunu Parliamentary Constituency in 1989, the Union Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs in 1990, member of Rajasthan Legislative Assembly from the Kishangarh Constituency in Ajmer District during the period 1993 to 1998, he also actively contributed as a member of important committees in both the Lok Sabha and the Rajasthan Legislative Assembly. He served as a member of a delegation representing as the deputy leader of a parliamentary group to the European Parliament during his tenure as Union Minister. He held, he held the esteemed position of Governor of West Bengal from 30th July 2019 to 18th July 2022. Sri Jagdeep Dankarji is currently serving as the 13th Vice President of India in that capacity, he is also the Chairman of the Upper House of Parliament, that is Rajya Sabha. He assumed office on 11th August 2022. I must also acknowledge the positive response he gave when we approached him to be the Chief Guest of today's function and for, the, for, for agreeing to deliver the valedictory address. I may humbly add that in the brief meeting that I was fortunate to get, I could sense his deep commitment for capacity building, nurturing human potential and team approach needed for taking the country in its path of Viksit Bharat. I once again welcome Sri Jagdeep Dankarji, Honorable <coughs> Vice President of India, Madam Sudesh Dankarji, to this valedictory program. It's also my pleasure to welcome Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh Ji, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand, to this valedictory program. Lieutenant General Lieutenant General Gur Gurmeet Singh Ji served as the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Indian Army from 2014 to 2016. He currently serves as the 8th Governor of Uttarakhand, assuming the governorship in 2021. During service in the Indian Army, he served as the Deputy Chief of Army Staff, Adjutant General and Corps Commander of the Strategic 15 Corps, which is responsible for overseeing the border security and counterterrorism efforts in Jammu and Kashmir. He has been awarded with four presidential awards and two commendations by the Chief of Army Staff during his nearly 40 years of distinguished service in the Army. These include Param Vishish Seva Medal, Uttam Yuddha Seva Medal, Ati Vishish Seva Medal and Vishish Seva Medal. General Gurmeet Singh has been a constant support to us at the Academy. We once again warmly welcome him to the valed valedictory program of the IS Professional Post <laughs> Respected sirs, the IAS Professional Course Phase 1 for the 2023 to 2025 batch commenced on 6th November 2023 and is culminating today. The training, weeks, training of 22 weeks in this course is aimed to make the officer trainees acquire a pan-India perspective of emerging socio-economic and political, pol political legal trends an understanding, role, uh, uh, an, an understanding of the emerging role of the IAS and its shared administrative responsibilities with other services. This year's iteration has 181 IAS officer trainees and three from the Royal Bhutan Civil Service, 
After phase one, the officers move on to district training in their respective cadres for a 52 week state come district attachment. During that period, they get exposed to the issues relating to the state, the culture, administrative systems and the field level problems. They also get to understand the potential of the place and frame their thoughts that will enable them to contribute for the state during the initial stage of, of this public service career and which will also be a solid base throughout the career. Thereafter, next year from April 2025, they have an eight-week attachment to the Central Secretariat at Delhi, which will be followed by a six to seven-week IS professional training program at the academy called Phase 2. This year, the district training has been made fo more focused and will be good grinding to the imbibe the officer trainees the finer nuances of taking the country to Vixit Bharat. DCILO's approach, citizen-centric and customer-centric thought process is the key component of this approach. To this extent, the district program for the officer trainees has been designed to also include attachments to key central government offices and institutions at the field level with an aim to leverage their presence for better governance and in the process also establish a field level interface. With the permission of the Honorable Vice President, of, I would also like to address the young officer trainees as, as this would be the last such formal occasion before they embark for their next phase of training. Dear officer trainees, public service is a sacred duty given to all of us. It is an opportunity for all of us to perform a task which the nation as a whole needs and the citizens in particular deserve where they deserve very bit of attention. We are expected to be role models in every form and to that extent have to display in all forums in the same manner. Every action of us has a profound impact on not only our ability to handle such onerous responsibilities bestowed on us, but is also a reflection of our own upbringing, the training that is imparted here, and our own ability to accept such inputs. A citizen-centric approach is needed at every stage, and to that extent, the citizen represents every customer and every stakeholder. Apart from domain and functional skills, the key is also behavioral skills. A life of simplicity, humility, focus, commitment, and discipline is what we look in you. Act as per your conscience and not on peer pressure. Celebrate the success of your team and the general lot as much as you celebrate your own. I'm sure, imbibing the above qualities, you move on in your career and you'll do us all very proud. It'll be a privilege for the group of this officer trainees of 2023 batch to listen to a person of the eminence of the chief guest, the Honorable Vice President of India. As they step into the next phase of training, they will be greatly benefited from the thoughts, directions and wise words of the Honorable Vice President. I would, one, I would like to once again welcome the Honorable Vice President, Madam Sudesh Jankarji, and Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand and all those who are present here. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. I would now like to request Director Sir to kindly felicitate the Chief Guest, Honorable Vice President of India. Thank you, sir. I would also like to request Director Sir to felicitate our esteemed guest of honor, Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh Ji, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand. I would now like to request Sri Nan Kumaramji, the course coordinator of the IES Phase 1 2023 batch, to kindly present the course report and thereafter request Sir to kindly present a short film on the course. Nanji. Ladies 
respected chief guest of the day, Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar sir, respected ma'am, Sudesh Dhankar ma'am, Honorable Governor of State of Uttarakhand, Lieutenant General Gurmeet Singh sir, Director of the Academy, Sri Shriyam Tarnikanti sir, Joint Director Sojanya ma'am, course team of phase one, faculty members, staff, and dear officer trainees of phase one 2023 batch. I extend a warm welcome to all of you to valedictory ceremony of the IAS professional phase, uh, training course phase one. The five and a half month course that commenced on the 6th November 2023 was designated to include a mix of in-class sessions, field immersions on relevant subjects, peer learning through group-based activities, a winter study tour, extracurricular module and outdoor activities. The course commenced with the deconstruction week wherein officer trainees interacted with senior officials from Government of India, State Government, District Administration to get a broad overview of different sectors, structure and function of governance and efforts that need to be made in our endeavor towards realizing the objective of a developed India. The academic input was curated around several thematic modules which was curated with the help of faculty members of the academy to provide a comprehensive understanding of the nature of work of such trainees will handle in the coming years. I would particularly express my gratitude to Joint Director Sojanya Ma'am for curating election module where election management process was not only explained to all of us but also hands-on session was organized on EVA management. The learnings and insight gained from this module will be of immediate relevance to the officer trainees. A detailed land administration, rural development and agriculture module was curated by Dr. Bagadi Gautam, explaining the land management practices, land survey techniques, interaction with the revenue department officials from respective cadres to understand the legal framework of land management. The challenges of urban government include issues like urban planning, municipal finance, urban transport, waste management, urban housing were discussed and deliberated upon in the urban module curated by Ms. Chavi Bharadwaj. I'm also thankful to Ms. Bharadwaj and Ms. Sanmuga Priya for designing the district administration and district training module respectively. These modules were aimed at providing an overall picture of district administration along with structure and functioning at the district level. Deputy Director Shailesh Naval very ably curated the education module which explained the framework of primary, secondary and higher education in the country and interventions being made under the schemes like in Nippon Bharat. I would further thank, thank Shailesh and Ms. Ritukar Narula, Professor of Economics for Economics module which was delivered in collaboration with IMF and NITI. The inputs on behavioral economics and its application in governance with particularly designed and meticulously planned hands-on sessions were a delight. I'm thankful to Sri Abhiram Shankar for his careful curation of forest, environment, disaster management module, whereby officer trainees learned about the legal framework of forest management and conservation, as well as disaster management structure at national, state and district level. The course incorporated a substantial input of law, curator by Professor Law, Dr. Anju Chaudhary, whereby officer trainees were ex inducted into the fundamentals of order writing and given domain training on various criminal and procedural laws. A moot court presided over by judges, academicians, enabled officer trainees to have an immersive understanding of the legal framework and processes. The data science and analytics module delivered by the IT team led by Shri Vinod Taneja in collaboration with IIT Delhi explained the basics of data science, visualization, algorithms of machine learning and use of analytics in government. I am thankful to Ms. Anupam Talwar for putting together health module wherein the basics of material and uh, maternal and child health and delivery framework for Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, National Digital Health Mission were explained to the officer trainees. In the national security module curated by former Deputy Director Ms. Disha Pannu, the officer trainees were explained contours of national security, border and maritime security, role of central armed police force and handling of left wing extremism in the country. In infrastructure and engineering module, officer trainees were exposed to the process of preparation of estimates for infrastructure projects and conductive effective inspection during their district tenure. In the research method module curated by Professor Pansathi, trainees were explained various quantitative and qualitative approaches to review, analyze and prepare policy papers at, in, during times to come. The financial management and procurement module was curated by Professor uh, Hari Prakash, which was which dwelled on procurement, project management, cash flow, project finance, government budgeting and accounts. Aswathi created public policy module which laid out framework for public policy and allowed OTs to think about their application in various policy questions. Ms. Ekta Unyal 
curated a program on ethics where case studies were used and which is, I firmly believe is the cornerstone for conduct of civil servants. I'm also thankful to Deputy Director Senior Ganesh Shankar Mishra for his valuable insights on field experience and project management as part of GPR module. Sir, as part of this program, officer trainees embarked on a six-week winter study tour, which incorporated attachment with various field units of the armed forces, including the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, field visits to public sector undertaking, non-government organizations, corporate entities, and public trusts, as also an immersion into large-scale public infrastructure projects, urban infrastructure projects, and an immersive experience in India's Northeast. Phase one is the time when officer trainees learn the language of their assigned cadres. I must thank our language faculty, Shri Arshad Nandanji, Shri K.B. Singhaji, Madam Bhavna Purwal, Shri Sarfaraji, Madam Vidya, Madam Rajini for being capable and patient teachers as officer trainees went about taking their first steps in this direction. Finally, I take this opportunity to thank the course team Shailesh, Ritika, Ekta and Romeo for sincerity, hard work and dedication with which they worked for the past five and a half months. Disciplined team led by Ritika and very capably supported by Ekta had the daunting task of maintaining decorum and order during a course that is longest in terms of duration and they did it with patience, maturity, equanimity that befits a guardian. I thank the training induction team, various sections of the academy, academy staff who worked tirelessly for last five and a half months for the course. As course coordinator, I had the proud privilege of interacting with officer trainees on different occasions and also I learned a lot from them. As parting advice before you proceed onto district training, I would like you to keep in mind the golden advice of Gautam Buddha, and I quote, do not believe in anything simply because it is you have heard it. Do not believe in anything simply because it is spoken and rumored by many. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious books. Do not believe in anything merely on the authority of your teachers and elders. Do not believe in traditions because they have been handed down for many generations. But after observations and analysis, when you find that anything agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and all, then accept it and live up to it. During the district training, learn well, execute your responsibilities, always safeguard the interests of the disadvantage. And finally, always remember the good counsel of Director Sir, something he has always stressed upon in his interactions with you. Always remember why you joined the service and do not let minor inconvenience move you away from the cause of the service. Now with the permission of the chair, I would like to close with the short film prepared on the course, sir. Heart of the majestic Missouri Hills at the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, a transformative journey has come to an end with the culmination of IAS Phase 1 Professional Training Program. Each step along this course was a stride towards excellence. The program with its visionary objectives has been a beacon guiding these aspiring administrators to lead with a profound understanding of the cultural fabric that weaves India together. The program has also laid a solid foundation in understanding field administration and developmental initiatives. The journey of Phase 1 commenced on November 6, 2023 with the dedicated efforts of the esteemed course team to ensure that we make our job that much more enriching at every point of time. So this is one thing I wanted to leave with you. Your whole unit exactly knows what the presiding officer is doing. Led by the course coordinator and associate course coordinators. Their meticulous planning and unwavering commitment were geared towards equipping you as future officers of the Indian administrative services with the essential skills and knowledge required to excel in your roles. The course was honored by the presence of esteemed dignitaries. This beautiful nation, which we've got so much from it, it's time for all of us to give something back. Cabinet Secretary. That to set the goal of developed country status is a huge change. Home Secretary. But our Prime Minister is talking 25 years. So that kind of vision, that kind of leadership we are now uh, fortunate to be working in. So we should all encash on that. And Secretary DOPT. There are certain values that are expected of you. You cannot short shift that at all. 
And this is what is intended while we train you. They graciously shared their insights and the nation's vision of Vixit Bharat 2047. During the rigorous 22-week training program, officer trainees dwelled into a variety of sector-specific modules. But you show your leadership and your inner character through everything you do. Sharpening their skills for effective governance and public service. Where is the urban growth happening today? With guidance from speakers representing a wide range of expertise. You know, minute-to-minute -minute guide on what, what is the role of an EMT, how should the pilot be trained. To academics and entrepreneurs, they provided valuable insights. So Section 30 of the Indian Police Act gives power to regulate assemblies. They provided valuable insights into their upcoming rules. Field visits provided hands-on exposure to administrative realities in key areas such as infrastructure, engineering, forest and environment, health, women and child development, and education. Furthermore, participation in mood code competition served to deepen their comprehension of legal frameworks. The officer trainees ventured beyond the confines of classroom and textbooks in the form of winter study tour, diving deep into the heart of India's diversity. It's commonly acknowledged that maintaining physical and mental fitness is crucial for achieving and delivering optimal performance. Throughout their training, the officer trainees actively engaged in a range of mandatory physical activities, both indoors and outdoors, ensuring a well-rounded approach to fitness. These modules provide the platform for trainees to explore their interests beyond conventional training routines. Phase 1 embraced cultural events alongside academics, injecting music and vibrancy into the program for a balanced, holistic growth. This fusion ensured a well-rounded educational journey, blending scholarly pursuits with cultural enrichment. As we close the 2023 IAS Phase 1 training program, it is necessary to acknowledge that the upcoming phase of district training awaits a profound learning experience where you will continue to learn, unlearn and relearn with each passing day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nanji, for the beautiful course report and the summarization of the same through this through the portrayal in this short film. Thank you, sir. We shall now have the awards giving ceremony for the officer trainees and to announce the results, I would like to request Dr. Ekta Unial, the associate course coordinator, to kindly come on stage and announce the same. I would also like to request Honorable Vice President of India, sir, and Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand to kindly give away the awards. Request Director Sir also to come forward, please. Namaskar to the dignitaries present and the officer trainees. I'm here to announce the awards, uh, which are for the various exams held during the entire course. And the first uh, award I, which I'll be announcing is the Director's Gold Medal and Certificate, which is the highest aggregate marks in Phase 1 final examination. And the award goes to Anirudh Yadav. <laughs> this award is given for achieving the highest total marks in the final examination of Phase 1 out of 300 marks and the subject carrying marks 60 marks include management public administration economics law and political science
Next in line is Director's Gold Medal and Certificate for Excellence in Non-Academic Activities. I'll ask Durga Prasad Adhikari to come on stage. This award is presented for involvement in non-academic activities with a total of 135 marks allocated. It encompasses discipline and behavior, physical training, sports, outdoors, clubs and society activities, participation in extracurricular activities, peer evaluation and director's overall assessment. Next is the director's gold medal for getting highest marks in civil services examination. I'll ask Ishita Kishore to come on stage. She was the highest topper, topper in UPSC and the award is conferred upon the top scorer in the UPSC IS examination. And all the Next is the director's gold medal and certificate and the award goes to Atul Sagar. The award is bestowed upon the top performing officer trainee in phase one final examination consisting of director's assessment and written examination both. Next is a team award. It's for best mood court winner team. And I'll request Damira Hima Vamshi, Grandesh Sai Krishna, and Dongre Ravya to come over to the stage to take the prize. and ma'am, that would be all from award side. Thank you. Thank you, honorable sirs and respected ma'am for giving away the awards. I would now like to request 
Honorable Vice President of India to kindly deliver the valedictory address. Is it good afternoon? Yes. No, not yet. Not yet. Good morning, all of you. I have looked at the clock. It is always good to be watchful because you have watched books all around, at least in my position. This is a large contingent in Rajya Sabha. Lieutenant General Gurmit Singh Ji, Honorable Governor of Uttarakhand. Director Lubasana, Sri Sri Ram Tarn Kanti. Joint Director Lubasana, Miss Sojanya. We have distinguished faculty here. We have Secretary, Vice President, Sri Sunil Kumar Gupta, and alumnus of this institute. Eighty-seven batch, IIT Kanpur background. The challenge to me is formidable. Dr. Vandana Kumar, Additional Secretary, Rajya Sabha. Nineteen ninety-two, Indian Defence Account Service. Your own. The Gupta ji is also your own, but generational gap. Sri Sujit Kumar, 2010 batch. <laughs> Gujarat Kader, Bihar State. I must tell you, Gupta ji is home state Uttar Pradesh, Kader, West Bengal. There is some silence. <laughs> Rightly so. Right from the time I landed at this place, my maiden visit, I was in sound company of my wife, Dr. Sudesh Dankar. But even without her, it would have been amazing experience. With her, it is exponential. <laughs> She has been a formidable challenge to me for 45 years. Always taunting, I am only a graduate in law. She is a PhD. <laughs> But great thing about this place is that the challenge is at the lowest level, thanks to your presence here. My young friends. It gives me immense pleasure to be with you all on the occasion of valedictory program of phase one for the 2023 batch of the Indian Administrative Service. Who doesn't know it? The moment you got into this service, you created a problem for your parents. People flock to their home for matchmaking, but times are changing. I am told you are doing it on your own. <laughs> the good thing is, the parents and relatives are reconciled to it. Your parents had the greatest satisfaction when you got into the IS by seeing the reaction of the neighbor, and suddenly you would find an upsurge in their morale. Never forget what you are. It is because of them. It is because of their sacrifice. <laughs> Never ever in your life forget your parents, your teachers, and your friends. 
that will take you a long way. It is indeed a gratifying moment for me to address young minds. I can't call you impressionable. You are mature. And after this training, rigorous training, you are impregnably mature. You are made to this place and you know it. It was most difficult tunnel to cross. You never saw light at the end of the road till you saw your name in the list. A fierce competition calling for best of it. But once you got into the list, the next phase is started and that is this phase. As I focus here on bright minds and promising leaders, by leaders I don't mean political leaders, though we are having increasing trend, bureaucrats in service and out of service get into politics and they make it to mighty positions also. I am reminded of the rich legacy of this esteemed institution where countless civil servants have been nurtured and groomed like you all to serve our great nation and all of them have contributed to the emergence of Bharat at this stage. Each of you, my friends, embodies excellence, integrity and commitment to public service, qualities that are indispensable for shaping the destiny of our nation. I see in all of you potential to define Bharat of your vision and conception. And trust me, you are competent. On our March to 2047 Vixit Bharat, at that point of time, all of you, each of you, will be in a commanding position. I and like me, many, will be watching from heaven the glorious moment. Friends, Bharat is on the rise as never before. And there is well-placed confidence that you all will be called upon to sustain and contribute to further galloping of this exponential development journey. You are seeing Bharat at a time when it is on the rise. Me and my generation have seen Bharat where there was no light in the village, no road connectivity. You can't think of tap water, you can't think of a toilet in the house. You can never imagine of a gas connection in the house. You can't have a school in your village or at the, mess, at the most you'll have to be satisfied with a primary school. And look at where we are. Let me therefore advert to the various facets of contemporaneous national scenario pertaining to economic, political, social and geopolitical facets. On economic fundamentals, my young friends, the last decade has been marked with a sea change, unbelievable change, a change that has stunned the world and that makes the present times one of hope and possibility. Overcoming a difficult phase, which was earlier, there is transition from an environment of despondency to one of upbeat mood. You have to capitalize on it, monetize for national welfare. Our economy over this period, with the standing headwinds and negotiating difficult terrain, has traversed from being fragile five global economies to being the fifth largest global economy ahead of our colonial masters, the United Kingdom, Canada, and France. In about two years, and none of us is in doubt, and none in the world is in doubt, in about two years or so, Bharat, home to one-sixth of humanity, would be the third largest global economy ahead of Japan and Germany. When I got into parliament in 1989, 
had the occasion to be a union minister i suffered the pain bharat that was known as sone ki chidiya the gold in physical terms had to be airlifted to be placed to two swiss banks to sustain our fiscal credibility what i see today i never dreamt or imagined then that's a big change <laughs> let me tell my young friends we are already third largest global purchasing power imagine the potential of it on economy and human resource employment our marathon march from amrit kal this kal to vikshit bharat fortunately for you all is well firmed up is well scripted by visionary thought of our prime minister who is committed to the cause in mission mode with a deep passion and this is coupled with dedicated execution of your fraternity the two are complementary you have to translate into success visionary policies and that indian bureaucracy is doing day in and day out at the moment friends our economy has been spinally strengthened and you will understand much better you must have seen it transformative policies and innovative reforms resulting in ease of living for those who are in the last row as mentioned by mahatma gandhi ji in his concept of antyodaya as a matter of fact this very thoughtful concept of the mahatma the antyodaya take care of the man last in the row is being realized work is in progress but by and large it is ground reality the world's largest tax reform and mind you in a country of 1.4 billion people with this diversity that is goods and services tax was unfolded in the central hall of parliament in 2017 by the then honorable president pranab mukherjee and prime minister narendra modi the chief architect of gst my young friends in the same central hall you would recall i am talking in terms of historical development at the stroke of midnight hour on 15th august 1947 India upon attainment of independence had twist with destiny and at the stroke of midnight on 1st July 2017 the nation with the commencement of GST regime had twist with modernity what a swing twist with destiny getting to twist with modernity in the same hallowed precincts of parliament GST has been a game changer reform a unifier for national economy and has added to the growth of the economy making it more transparent and enabling for its contributors contrary to global scenario you know the global scenario you are informed minds discerning minds you know the state of affairs in developed nations nations in europe america and others they are facing difficult scenario but our bharat has been steadily rising our economy is looking up despite the challenges and the challenges emanated from covid pandemic and presently global conflagrations threatening supply chains it must be soothing to all of you that hardly a week passes when our navy has not performed to save the supply chains to rescue victims of piracy 
every Indian would be proud of their accomplishments. Nation has witnessed not pyramidical but plateau kind of social development. Let me tell you, if it is pyramidical, some will rise, others will not. But those of you who are interested in geography and know what plateau means, you uplift all at the same level. And this is happening in our country. For the needy and suffering, which will be your primary concern. Upliftment has been transformative beyond contemplation. My young friends, in a country of our size and diversity, it was indeed a staggering, staggering thought. Forget about achievement, just a thought that every household will have electricity. Difficult to think. We were thinking in terms of a village being electrified. If one household in a village is electrified, we were happy. But look at the staggering thought that occurred in the mind of visionary leadership of the Prime Minister. He thought every household will have electricity, toilet, tap water and gas connection. And every person would have access to health and education facilities. A good wish list, a great dream. But what has happened? These are now largely ground reality. And the work is in progress. You will have to sustain it. You will have to give qualitative as to it. You are gifted, I would say, by destiny to serve the largest democracy on the planet. Friends, unimaginable milestone high digital and technological connectivity across the country has been no less than a stunning accomplishment. There was a time when we were decades behind global technological movements. Look at where we are. We are turning out to be leaders. Taste of the pudding lies in eating. Let me share with you certain accomplishments. This has resulted in India accounting 50% of global digital transactions in the year 2023. We are one sixth of humanity. But our share of global digital transactions is 50% something that will make our head high. We will ever take pride in this accomplishment. Digital connectivity and robust infrastructure has enormously benefited the country because it is available now in every nook and corner of the country. It dots our geographical area. Every village has it. You no longer suffer the pain if you are from a village, you will get the same facility. Internet accessibility, that is the job of the government. And adaptability, that is citizen-centric. But when we judge our performance on internet accessibility and adaptability in every part of the country, is evidenced by the fact that our per capita internet consumption happens to be more than that of USA and China taken together. This game-changer technological penetration has also massively contributed to governance, accountability and transparency. In your assignments, you will have to sharpen it, make it more productive. A challenge, I have no doubt, you will overcome. My young friends, you are too young to know about it. But you can look back in history. We had a young Prime Minister in the 80s. Our Prime Minister then lamented that not even 15% of the amount meant for the development reaches the beneficiary. It was his concern. How do I tackle this menace? Only 15 percent, 85 percent 
goes elsewhere. Goes for the purpose not meant. It only enables those who are engaged in corruption to gain thereby. His lament was this. And now, what a 360 degree change? The intended beneficiary receives digitally 100% assistance without leakage, without cut money, without intermediary. He receives in his bank, inner bank. That takes me that what a visionary step was taken to include 500 million people in banking system. They opened their accounts for the first time. Look at the gain we are getting from thereof. Let me come to my grassroots. I'm son of a farmer. I'm, a from, a, I'm from a village. I'm first generation to step out in that sense of the term. What I see today and what I could not imagine when I was a minister and a member of parliament 34 years ago, that now 100 million farmers three times a year receive direct transfers to their banks of fiscal assistance of the central government. PM Kisan Nidhi Saman. The government may be prepared. The robust infrastructure may be prepared. But the glorious accomplishment is that farmer is prepared to receive it. Is receiving it. And this amount at the moment, my young friends, is about 3 lakh crores. Not a small amount. Service delivery for the ordinary person has been technologically driven given the facility in nearly all the villages with computer centers. Look at our young people in the villages or tier 2 cities when they apply for a job, when they fill an examination form, when they seek a passport, they no longer have to use the old method that was heavy drain on finance and hours. They do it by technological means. We in the country needed a big change in education. New education policy, after a gap over three decades, is now poised to bring about much needed revolutionary change in the education system. It is now tailored to suit our needs, our thinking. Our dreams, we don't dream in a foreign language. We dream in our own language. It is tailor-made to suit our needs. And the shift is from mere degree orientation to skill evolution. And the shift is very timely. Our rail, road and air connectivity, which you see day in and day out, ask your grandparents, ask your parents, what was the situation then and what the situation now? Not only quantitative, but qualitative also. We are having world-class railway stations, world-class airports. And look at our roads. And look at multiple choices for connectivity to a particular place. Let me go to my home state, Jaipur. Delhi, Jaipur, there was earlier one through Alwar. Over a period of time, it came direct through Kot Putli. And now it is part of the Delhi Bombay Grand Highway, world class highway. The time earlier it used to be 19 hours, it was reduced to 5 6 hours, now about 3 hours. That's a big change. Our infrastructure has shown quantum jump, quantitatively and qualitatively, and matches global best. On international front, this is your times. You must have seen it. G20, Presidency of Bharat. 
was incredulously successful. Every state and union territory organized G20 functions. The world witnessed Bharat, its civilizational ethos of more than 5,000 years old. They were exposed to our culture. They were exposed to the sharpness intellect of our human resource. They were exposed to the level of reception we people have in this country. And the final was held where? Bharat Mandapam. No one knew when it came. Suddenly it came up. One of the top ten global centers, convention centers. The Prime Minister had the honor and privilege to receive world leaders and look at the backdrop. You must have seen it all. And when the world leaders walked through the alley to the main hall, they were exposed to our civilizational wealth of 5,000 years. And then we had P20, Parliament 20. That was at Eshobhumi. None had heard of it. Such a convention center with parking place for more than 3,000 cars. I was there at both the places. I couldn't believe my eyes. But what was surprising and soothing, that the global leaders were uploading it. That is what it is. Our growth is not in just infrastructure. G20 will be historically known that Bharat is emerging as a world leader, sharpening its soft diplomatic power. African Union has been included in G20. We became voice of Global South. I don't want to advert to other areas, you know it more than I do. Friends, governance, that would largely be your concern. Largely has taken a turn for the better. The times with Mr. Sunil Gupta, 87 batch, or your director, faced were very different. The challenges before them were very different. The terrain was very difficult. Yet they made success of it. You are well positioned to take a big leap because equality before law that eluded us for long. You must have seen it. Some were more equal than others. Some thought we were privileged by degree. Some thought law cannot reach us. We are immune, immune to legal process. It must have been pain to, pain to young minds. How can someone in a country that is democratic be more equal than the other? But this equality before law had eluded us for long. And corruption, it was running into the veins of administration, like blood. Both these menaces, pernicious mechanisms, are now behind us. My young friends, you and your colleagues in civil servants, have contributed to this revolution silently. You will have the occasion to contribute massively. It will be mostly in silence. But trust me, when accomplishment is effected in silence, it resonates in the ears of the common man and one and all. Now, privileged pedigree for long beyond the rule of law, was reaping the harvest. And meritocracy suffered. You are all product, remember, of meritocracy. It is your merit that has positioned you in this place to be public servants of Bharat. And what is happening to the privileged pedigree? They are sulking in the bylanes. A big change. 
democratic values and essence is equally deepening before law because it is being enforced in exemplary fashion. Corruption, my young friends, is no longer a trading commodity. Earlier, it was the only mechanism, a passage to contract recruitment opportunity. Nothing would happen unless you take this route. Those who took this route facilitated the route by being corrupt, are being made to take root of law. You know it more than I do where. Our power, power corridors, you will be there. Power will be there in you because you earned it. You are entitled for it. You are competent to use that power. But power corridors, there was a time and not long ago, were infested by corrupt elements. The extra legally leveraged decision making, a challenge which you will not face, which your seniors faced. You have a soothing, wholesome environment. What do we see now? No obesity transparency and accountability. I was exposed to governance aspects when I headed a group of 10 governors on ease of governance. I therefore came to be educated, I would say, what was the situation earlier and what is the situation now. The change could not have been far more effective than it is today. The cumulative impact of all these concerted changes has been that the country has been pulled out of despondency. The people were losing hope. They were thinking pastors elsewhere. They were worried. They were not sure about themselves because they were not sure about the system. And what is now? India has become land of hope and possibility. A hot spot of global opportunity, favorite destination of investment. This is where you are at the moment. You have to capitalize on this situation. We were living at times at your age when we used to satisfy ourselves. India has potential. India is a sleeping giant. But my young friends, you are fortunate. I would say, in a country of 1.4 billion people, you are fortunate. Your number here is not in three digits, within three digits, not getting into four digits. And you can take pride now. India is no longer a nation with potential. We are no longer a sleeping giant. We are on the move. You have to accelerate this moment. The global establishments, I indicated to you, the goal had to be physically airlifted. They were in punishing mode for us, as they are in punishing mode for our neighbors or some other countries. But what do they say about us now? The World Bank, the IMF, and the forums like World Economic Forum, they have acclaimed from public domain in high decibel our phenomenal rise, indicating India is a model which others can follow in the field of digitization and several other areas. The nation suffered some problems. And we were reconciled, we'll have to live with them. We were in a state of hopelessness. Article 370, the only temporary article of the Constitution was presumed to be only final article of the Constitution. 
people advocated after taking oath of the constitution that article 370 is beyond change you would know historically that dr ambedkar chairman of the drafting committee drafted all the articles of the constitution except article 370 peep into history you will find out he declined to do it his communication on this point is very emotive and that emotion was taken care of during this decade article 370 is no longer in the constitution a big change we never imagined what i'm indicating to you is that you will have to contribute more because some of the greatest obstacles that pained us have been overcome and look at what has happened after article 370 ceased to be in the constitution jammu and kashmir is blossoming the number of tourists there and i can suggest to you once you engage if you are not already done in your maritime relationships this could be your hot favorite destination also i was there with dr sudesh dankar then situation was fine i don't blame her for situation worsening but when as a minister i went there in 1990 he stayed in centaur hotel it was deathly silence and now lakhs and lakhs of tourists are going there can you imagine unfurling flag there was difficult situation and now g20 functions were held there world leaders were there the economy is looking up members of your tribe i am using tribe in a positive sense don't catch it from that sense who had the occasion to have that as your cadre state had the occasion to serve it for decades were denied <coughs> even a piece of land for your residence to put it from your perspective that big change has taken place hope has been rekindled in jammu and kashmir huge positive upsurge in economy and development of the area it is favorite tourist destination destination another aspect women reservation for three decades i wouldn't uh, decry anyone earnest efforts were made to see that they become part of policy making they become part of legislature part of law making earnest efforts were made they did not succeed fortunately they succeeded last year women representation in lok sabha will be more than one third because one third is reserved it will be in state legislatures more than one third and this reservation comes with societal anger also scheduled caste scheduled tribe women will get reservation within the reservation so the reservation has a societal anger by being both horizontal and vertical i have no doubt and not because i have a only daughter women will contribute more effectively impactfully and soothingly the human face of policy by their training the life they lead the challenges they face they are well equipped to give that input but they can give it only when they are in the room where decisions are taken and they will have this occasion now my young friends i have in macro manner advocated to these aspects with a purpose i can keep on going several aspects are there you know it i just only the broad points at macro level because at your launch pad time you have an enabling ecosystem that will help you expand your talent and dedication 
optimally for the nation. You can effect the change you believe in. This is a rare opportunity. People believe in a change. They are handicapped in bringing about the change. But you will be convinced of that change. And as a matter of fact, you are obligated to bring about that change. Having said all this, there are some very similarly alarming challenges we face from within and without. There is a strategized orchestration of factually untenable anti-national narratives aimed at tainting and tarnishing our glorified and robust constitutional bodies, decrying our growth journey. I don't think we need lessons from anyone about rule of law, about our robust judicial system, about methods to alleviate poverty. How can anyone lecture in the world to a nation that from April 1, 2020 is making available free food to 85 850 million people. This does not indicate poverty. This is a helping hand to them. That yes, they must keep on coming up and rising to a higher level. We can't allow others to calibrate us because they neither have the resources, nor knowledge, nor understanding how this country works with 5,000-year-old ethos where we treat and that treatment is reflected in our G20 motto, one earth, one family, one future. When I was talking about anti-national narratives, you are well-informed minds. Just imagine, Citizen Amendment Act, now anyone who can spare a moment with modest intellect to go through that amendment act would know it does not deprive anyone of his or her citizenship. doesn't deprive. It does not handicap anyone on the, on the globe to apply for Indian citizenship. The system is there. What does it do? It facilitates acquisition of Indian citizenship for whom? For Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis and Christians from our neighborhood, country like Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan and who are in this country prior to 31st December 2014. It is not an invitation for influx. And why it is being conferred on them? It's a healing touch to them. They were being persecuted on account of their religious belief. Our nation has been home to such people for thousands of years. Jews, Parsis, Zoroastrians, they found sanctuary, growth, wholesome situation here. And this, some call discriminatory. We have to neutralize these narratives. These emanate not out of ignorance. These emanate out of a strategy to run down our nation. This nation on the planet does not need any scripture or sermon from anyone on the point of equality. We have believed in it. Let them look back. Some countries are yet to have a woman president. We had a woman prime minister before UK had. We had a Supreme Court. In other countries, Supreme Court had completed two centuries and more without a woman just we have. We welcome all lectures, all sources of knowledge if they emanate from bona fide intentions. Friends, 
the freedom and democracy that we take for granted today is an outcome of unimaginable sacrifices by many valiant unsung heroes of our freedom movement. Fortunately, we are giving their due to our heroes now, though belatedly. We have now Prakram Divas celebrating the role of Netaji Swas boss. And his statue is there at India Gate. Belatedly, but we are doing honor to him. We have Jan Jati Gaurav Divas dedicated to Birsa Munda. At what age this tribal leader contributed to freedom movement? This is just to name two. Many more. Recent confirmation of Bharat Ratna, the highest civil award, posthumously, to Karpuri Thakur. The name is this. Social justice in us. Chaudhary Charan Singh, a symbol of transparency, accountability, integrity, and firm believer in growth of village. P.V. Narsimha Rao, a politician statesman. Dr. M.S. Swaminathan, our agriculture was revolutionized by him. All these have been widely acclaimed. The honor to these noble souls should have come long ago. My young friends, you will impact this society more than anyone else. When I say more than anyone else, I'm not spelling out others. But the moment you become a district magistrate, imagine the faith people have in you. Of all ages, they look up to you as a role model. It's a gratifying moment for them when they meet you. The way you behave in society is taken to be worth emulation. You are inspiration and motivation for the area in which you operate. And therefore, corresponding obligation on you, you will have to exemplify your conduct accordingly. You will have to seek admiration of the elders. And you will have to be motivational for younger minds. Work with Seva Bhav and Sanubhuti, a sense of service and empathy, deeply embedded in our civilization ethos, has to be your guiding principle. Adhere to it, it will change this society and you have the capacity to catalyze this change. My young friends, your potential is undoubted. Your ability is established. Your opportunity is well recognized. And in such a situation, you have to take care of certain things which are deficiencies in our society like public discipline, to name just one. You can transform it. The greatest challenge to our democracy polity is emerging from those, and here I caution you, those who have been part of dispensation, part of governance, have held positions of power, had all the occasion under the sun to contribute for growth of this nation. Once out of authority, they become complete recipe for chaos. They would say, India is sinking. Its economy cannot go beyond this level. You know who I'm referring to? I do not give the name to you. You know it. We have to challenge this, as was indicated by one of the speakers here. We can't take it as firm and final. The reputation they built was on the opportunity they got in governance. They are fritting, fritting away because they tend to look things from political prism. We have to address nationalism and look the prism that promotes nationalism. These people were poor appetite for India's growth trajectory, 
must need some rebuff from young minds in positions of authority and constitutional obligations to serve this nation. I find it painful on occasions and deeply concerning that commitment to nationalism is not what it should be in some people. They take nationalism next to their political or self-welfare. We have to nurture our spirit that nationalism has to be our prime concern. We always have to keep our nation first and above everything else. Now next, I can address this point only before such an informed audience. Nothing can be more challenging to democracy than an informed mind, a knowledgeable mind, a mind in whom you believe that yes, he's a great lawyer, he's a great economist, he's a great social scientist. If such a mind gets perverted for political reasons, tries to exploit ignorance of the people for political gain, people are carried away. They will say, yes, he is an economist, a great economist, acknowledged economist. We have elevated him to iconic level. Therefore, what he says must be true. You are enabled by your intellect, training, capacity and constitutional obligations to take wind out of this. I'm sure you'll do it. There can be no politics over national affairs, security concerns, and our foreign policy. The global rise of the nation has always to be in your mind so that you ever ensure the momentum never loses force. My dear friends, you can bring about transformation which you dreamt because the system has generated enough equity for you to perform. When I refer to governance days of Guptaji or your director or other officials, the equity was not there. They couldn't take quantum jump. In your case, the equity is more than sufficient and I'm sure you'll do it. Sardar Patel once said, I quote, Faith is of no avail in absence of strength. Faith and strength both are essential to accomplish any great work. He further added in Constituent Assembly, you will not have a united India if you have not a good all India service which has the independence to speak out its mind. I read it there when I paid floral tribute to the iron man of the country. Never forget, he achieved what was very daunting, virtually impossible, integration of princely states. You need to be fully updated. Why integration of Jammu and Kashmir was kept away from him? These two situations, Article 370, kept away from Dr. Ambedkar, State of Jammu and Kashmir taken away from the portfolio of Sardar Patel and look at how we suffered for decades. You will be facing another situation which others have not faced, though you will be at the junior most level, but the challenge will be more forceful to you. I am referring to disruptive technologies. Artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, machine learning, blockchain, and the kind. It is your obligation because we are at the cusp of something like another industrial revolution. These technologies will be with us. These offer both opportunity challenges. You'll have to convert challenges into opportunities
for public good, and I'm sure you'll do it. I think I have taken more time than I should have. I would therefore conclude, congratulate each of you on this great positioning, on this very rigorous training. If you have had any serious thought about director and the faculty being unreasonable to you or harsh to you, you will be grateful to them all your lives and remember them for the good they have done to you. May you continue to inspire others. And mind you, each of you is a role model for your family, for your friends, for your community, for your area. And you will be ever a role model when you will be positioned at a particular place for a particular work. And therefore, inspire others with your commitment and always strive to make positive difference in the lives of those around you. Thank you. Jayanth.